Okay, folks, I'm going to be the first one to admit that I'm kind of late to the party on this next one, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But apparently, Charlie Kirk says that when he gets on an airplane, if he sees a black pilot, he's nervous and he's concerned because he wonders if that black pilot got the job because they were actually qualified or if they only got the job because they were black. Yeah, a grown man in 2024 said that. And if that ain't bad enough, there were black conservatives who chimed in to tell people like us that we're taking that all out of context and that we're the racist for pointing out the obvious racism that that is. Now, the reason that I'm late to the party on this one is because several years ago, I stumbled across some Charlie Kirk videos and I just found him to be a blithering idiot. He just come off like a smug, arrogant moron and he was no one that I wanted to hear talk because he had nothing thought provoking to say. And I'm not the type of person that goes around, you know, trolling right wing content creators. I don't sit there and listen to their stuff because I don't value it enough to do so. Uh, people will send me clips. I'll stumble across certain things or I'll see certain headlines. And when I do, I'm fair about it. And I will go dig in and I will look for the context because I realize someone's going to say, you took the context. So I dig in deep and I listen to see what they have to say. And again, Charlie Kirk has never had anything of any value to say. So that's why I wasn't paying attention. But that's just the thing. I wasn't paying attention. I, 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 I slept on that one. And I've been guilty of sleeping on it before. And that's what I want to talk about. I grew up in a very white part of the world. I'm right on the East Tennessee, Southeast Kentucky, Southwest Virginia border. I have the trifecta of the Bible Belt right where I'm at. When I was growing up, there was very uh, few black people in my town. And there was absolutely none in the county schools that I went to. All through grade school, K through six, there was never a black student in my school. Uh, when I got up to junior high, seventh and eighth grade, I think there was one then. And when we got on up into high school, there was a, there was a couple. There might have been one in my graduating class, but uh, I came from a very white part of the world. And no, back then I didn't necessarily see a lot of loud, over-the-top racism. Yeah, I heard a lot of inappropriate things, and I, I got taught a lot of things. I've talked about this in videos before, but I got taught a lot of things that I later learned weren't true, and I had to face up to those things. But no, I didn't see racism real big and loud because it was just all a bunch of white hillbillies where I was. I didn't really start seeing that stuff strongly until Donald Trump came along, and he began empowering that hatred, and he began giving them all the courage to say all the quiet parts out loud, and then suddenly good people who I grew up with and once thought was really good people begin making some of the most heartless jokes I ever heard in my life and begin saying the kind of things that Charlie Kirk said out loud with no fear of ramification because, hell, I'm in blood red Tennessee, so they feel like they can just shout that to the rooftops and it's cool. I've made several videos talking about race in the past, and I always rub people in my part of the world wrong when I do it. I always get a lot of mail right after I do a video like this. But um, the moral of what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, I rested on it back when I was younger and I didn't take it serious because it wasn't affecting me and I own up to that. You know, I, I did get made fun of over my accent and I grew up in a holler and I had, I had, you know, I was raised poor. I didn't have the best of clothes and just the holler we lived in had a reputation anyway. So if you were from that part of the world, oh God, he's one of them, he's one of them holler kids. Oh no, here he comes. So yeah, people made fun of me for the holes in my jeans and the flannel shirts that I was wearing. And they made fun of me for the, you know, the accent that I had and the way I spoke. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm owning it. I don't have the greatest education in the world, but I was never, um, I was never talked down to over the color of my skin. And when faced with law enforcement, I was never sitting there terrified for my life. I was terrified of getting a ticket. I, I, I was terrified of, uh, of maybe having to go, you know, pay a, pay a fine or something, but I wasn't sitting there fearing for my life. Those things I had to learn later on in life when I got out in the world and realized there was a lot bigger world than the one at the end of my holler. And that's a thing around here that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And it makes a lot of people mad when people like me points it out. And then they start saying, well, you're trying to make everything about race. No, what we're trying to do is turn this thing in a different direction because Donald Trump has empowered this type of shit and he's got people out there. I mean, to the black conservatives out there who defend the likes of Charlie Kirk, I want you to know that as long as you say everything that they want you to say, 
yeah, you'll be their one friend. And you'll be the one guy or the one girl, they'll send videos to people like me and say, see there, one of them agrees with me. But say one word the wrong way. And you'll see the racism come at you like you've never seen it before. But you probably won't acknowledge it because I've not seen very many black conservatives ever call it out. They let it go on for whatever reason, and that puzzles me. But I slept on it as a kid, and I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to work harder to develop a better understanding about it, but I'm guilty of sleeping on Charlie Kirk because I just wrote him off as a blithering idiot. But all these good old boys that used to go around shaving their heads and wearing sheets and shit and spooking people like Forrest Gump said, now they just put on a three-piece suit, and they stand there, and they call themselves proud, and they mouth off to an audience that will buy it and lap it up because they've been empowered to. You know, our parents' generation gets a lot of shit. They get called boomers all the time. My parents, all oh, your parents are boomers. Yeah, they're boomers, but they were hippies. And they didn't buy into this bullshit then. And we can't buy into it now, ever. 